Hey everybody, welcome back to Jamia's Promo, and today we're going to talk about the top 10 new features of the brand new One UI 2 with Android 10 update. Now before we go inside of these 10 new features, a few people want to know what is that small little Easter egg when you go inside of the software information and you keep on tapping on Android version. So it pulls up Android 10 and really you're able to manipulate and move around the word of Android and the numbers individually. So it's pretty fun, one of those cool little uh, Easter eggs. A few people would like to know what that is. So as you guys know, I've been doing a test or a little experiment with a particular YouTube algorithm dealing with the number of likes a video gets. So please do me a little favor, hit that little like button below the video, and let's see what happens to this video with as many likes as it can get as possible. And thank you for all of your help. The first brand new feature that we'll talk about today is one that nobody really talks about, and it's a hidden feature called teardrop icons. And so you can see it's a way that you can change the shape of your icons. What you wanna do is pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon and go to the very bottom and unlock developer options. Now, once you have developer options unlocked, you want to again, go to the very bottom underneath the option of theming. This is where you can change your accent colors, the headline and body font, along with your icon shape. Now there's five different options. You have default, you have square, teardrop, squircle, and rounded rectangle. Now my favorite out of all of these is teardrop. Once you select on teardrop, um, I reset my phone, turn it on, and it was all activated. Now this one is the beta version, so maybe if it was part of the full released version, maybe it would change instantly. Uh, if not, just hit on reset and turn your phone back on and you're good to go with the brand new teardrop icons. Feature number two is one that I personally love and I turn it on almost daily at different points in the day and it's called focus mode. So when you pull down the notifications panel, you can see that it would be on the very top. Uh, it's also part of the digital well-being. So once you go inside of focus mode, uh, it kind of brings you again into digital well-being, but down here is ways that you can disconnect. So you can see that the digital well-being has a complete overhaul. Everything looks completely different. Your unlocks is there, notifications, you have app timers, but this is what we're talking about here underneath ways to disconnect. You have wind down and you can also have parental controls. But underneath focus mode, it's a way that you can avoid distractions from your phone and keep your life in focus. So there was originally two of them that they created, which was work time and me time. And then I made this one here called phone down. Now underneath work time, it's a way that you're able to choose the applications that are best for you when you're at work. So for example, maybe you need booking.com, your calculator, calendar, you need to take a pictures of something at your work. Uh, again, get a hold of your photos, your contacts. You need to do Google searches, uh, contact people, LinkedIn, pages, all that stuff. Uh, and then this is where you can start it and you can also add or delete some of those applications. So let me show you exactly what this looks like. It's kind of a sophisticated version of do not disturb mixed with safe mode. And once you start it up, it kind of puts your phone into a do not disturb state, kind of like nobody can call you, text you, unless if you turned on you know, text messaging, uh, but also uh, grays out all the applications and you can't use all the rest of them. So this is kind of like safe mode. You Any of those applications that you've downloaded off the Play Store, even some of the applications that were preloaded on the phone, you can't even use. And so for me time, I said yes to the YouTube, I said yes to messaging, listening to music, but really everything else I am not able to do until this is over. And then if you will needed to add more applications, just go inside of me time uh, underneath the seven available apps, you basically have to end the focus time, add in more apps if you need to. And once you have them all set up, you're good to go. But focus mode is fantastic. It's really sophisticated. It's a way that, again, it's putting you into safe mode, stopping you from using all the rest of the applications uh, and do not disturb. So if you don't want people to text you for a couple hours and you only wanna use music and YouTube, then you can also do that as well. And everything comes back right away. Uh, safe mode, usually you'd have to restart a phone and such. That's why it's a sophisticated version of kind of the mix of the two. Now, the next one that we'll be talking about today is the new alarm setup or the way that you hit on snooze. So let's say that we go inside of the tools, we go inside of the clock, uh, and let's start a brand new alarm. So we're gonna set up for Wednesday. Right now it is 344, so let's put this for 345. And I'm gonna show you what this new setup looks like, and it's actually pretty nice. So we're gonna hit on there, and then now let's wait. And this is what the new setup will look like. Uh, you can also add in more time if you want your snooze time to be 
uh, you know, longer, shorter, you can dismiss it, or you can just hit on the snooze icon. The next big change has to deal with the camera and it's mostly dealing with the layout. So on the bottom, when you go through and you change your shooting mode, you can see that it's kind of acting as a magnifying glass when you're switching it. So you can see how the letters get larger as it gets into the shooting mode um, that of your choice. Now, the other thing that they also changed is on the very bottom, instead of it going more and more and more and it keeps on laying out all of the different shooting modes, you can go underneath more and then this is where it has those extra modes that you don't really use. Also, it also has your Bixby vision and AR emoji that's built inside of there. So it's not gonna be on the top. So going to look at what it used to look like, you know, with the past version, if you go inside of your camera, you can see here that Bixby vision and AR emoji is kind of um, on the very top. And then also too, uh, when you go through here, this is just pretty much the animations of switching the modes. Uh, you can also go through and you can press and hold and then this is your entire list of them. You can change the, the order of them around and you can also you know, deselect a few of them if there's any of those that you don't want to use. Uh, but this one over here with Android 10, it's all gonna be inside of more so this way you can just move them into here. Now if you'd like to edit this, you just hit on that little edit button. Um, if you don't want to use your slow motion, you can bring it up there. Maybe if you'd like to use night, you can press and hold and then bring it over here. And then you can also move around the order of how you want them to be listed and you just hit on save. The next feature is one that's pretty small, but I could see a huge difference with the change. And it's one that I use all the time, which is creating folders and changing their colors. So this one over here was yellow. Uh, when you click on the color over here, it's a larger icon, so it's easier to get to. And normally you would have kind of mundane, boring colors. And then you also have this rainbow sheet. Now this one is really easy to get the color that you want to use. And it also shows you, you know, your recent colors that you've used in the past. Now to kind of compare this to what it used to look like, if I was to head over to the Galaxy S10, uh, you can see here again, kind of boring colors. Uh, and then that icon was very small, hard to get to. And then again, when you go inside of this whole color scheme here, you gotta kind of go through here and then you have the whole dial there. And I'm not really a huge fan of how this one was used, but with this one, it's a really easy color sheet. Once you choose on one, then you can also change it that way as well if you needed to change the tone uh, of that color that you chose. So it's a very small change, very subtle change, but I'm a huge fan of that small change. The next feature that we'll talk about today is inside of Smart Select, but it's almost kind of like a smart crop. Now, if you know this channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of Smart Select. So as for example, what I'm talking about is let's say that we go inside of the internet, right? So we're inside of Chrome and usually when you open up Smart Select, it'll just put a little square in the middle of the screen. But what you're gonna see here is it's going to select a particular area that it feels you might be taking a picture of. So you can see how it went right around that image on the very top and it's a perfect rectangle of that exact image. So if that was what I wanted to take a crop or image of, it would do it for me. So let's just do another option. So uh, let's go inside of Twitter. Uh, and again, usually what would happen is Smart Select would go into kind of just a regular placement of its little rectangle. So let's say that I move this up a little bit and I wanna have this picture kind of be clear. So I want it to be away from that. So let's do this again, rectangle. And it takes it right around that image of where that car is. So let's go to another area. Uh, again, it would place it kind of a, a big square, uh, but this there goes into a perfect rectangle of what is on the screen, maybe thinking that that is the image that you're trying to do a smart select of. So smart crop was added in. Again, I don't think many people know about that one either, but it's one that I love. The next feature is dealing mostly with Android 10 and its navigation. So on the bottom here, you can see I'm still using the buttons, the little icons for recents home and back. And that's only because I love the new navigation features of Android 10, but because this is beta, it has a lot of issues and it's very clunky and it doesn't really work perfect. But once this full launch is out, I am excited for me to use that again. So what you wanna do is go inside of your display. Then you're gonna scroll down to navigation bar, and then this is where you go to your full screen gestures. Now, what they've added was more options, and this is where you can go, you know, swiping from the bottom and also the sides. So right now, let's just leave it up with this one. When you swipe up, that's gonna be basically your back or your home button. Uh, on the bottom, when you bring it up, just pretty much halfway. So this is where it kind of clunks down for me, but this is where your recent apps are at. So this is something that's part of Android 10. It's a thing that I got used to and I loved, you know, with a brand new Pixel. But because this phone is still in beta, uh, it doesn't work perfect every single time. 
but then you can swipe in for your back. You can do it on the right side and you can do it on the left. So anytime that you wanna go back, you're not doing anything on the bottom, you're just using the sides of the screen. And you can also see too that when you go into this full screen here, because you have all your gestures, some of these applications kind of move down or at least it feels like they move down. So it makes it a little bit easier to navigate with one hand. Now again, home button is by swiping up, going into recents, you wanna press and hold and keep it there in the center. And this is where all your recent applications is. And then when you swipe on the left or right hand of the screen, going into the screen middle, that is how you're able to go backwards. The next update that we'll talk about is one that's built inside of Samsung's own internet browser. So when you go inside of here, you can see that the colors have completely changed. It's easier to read. Uh, and also too, on the bottom, you can change how your tabs are set up. So normally when you're able to go through all your different tabs, um, let's say you change to the card view uh, view. This is what they usually look like. It's, it's in a card view. There's two cards right there, but you can switch it over into a list view, which is one that I do like. So this way it's really easy to kind of go through all your different uh, tabs. And again, when you look at these colors, it makes it really easy to view and read. Now let's say that we go inside of Chrome, uh, and here is that same website here. So I did just activate dark mode with Chrome and you can see that it's really not as fun to read as what the internet browser was. And so it makes a lot of blacks going on here with different coloring themes and colors of the text, but this makes it a lot easier to read than what Chrome was. And this was that small little update. Also, if you look at this little animation, when you hit on your recents button, it kind of almost brings up that last uh, last used application right there for you. So again, another small change there that uh, Samsung hasn't really fully listed out. The next feature that has changed is going to be the new wallpaper screen and also your new wallpaper. So dark mode is a huge deal, but the way that it looks when you set up your wallpapers has changed. So beforehand, it didn't really show you both of them on how they were looking. Uh, also, uh, when you go inside of my wallpapers, when you scroll down, you can see all of these defaults, but then you're also gonna see default 13 and 14. I believe both of these are brand new with this update. Feature number 10 is talking about live transcribe. Now there is another feature I do wanna throw in on this one, so we'll actually have 11, but for the 10th one, let's talk about live transcribe. Now it doesn't work with the beta version, but I'm excited for this to work with the full rollout. When you go inside of your accessibility, go underneath the hearing and uh, or hearing enhancements inside of hearing enhancements you can see this one here called live transcribe and you can turn this on now what's going to happen is you're going to have this little person or icon on the bottom and this is something where let's say that it uses the phone's microphone to transcribe anything that is happening so right here it should be picking up my voice and transcribing everything and placing it into uh, this little text area here. So let's say that we go inside of this spot. Um, I can also type things out. I should be able to see what is being spoken to. So if you're hard of hearing, you'll be able to see it. Uh, you can go inside of your settings, you can do more settings and you can see a lot of things. So this microphone, if you also have a headset, you can change it to that headset. I can also change it to my watch. Let's say that we go on back. Uh, you can save transcriptions for multiple days. You can send feedback, you have advanced, you can hide profanity. I also tried watching a YouTube video, maybe thinking that it would work through something playing on the phone itself. And again, it didn't work there as well. And so really just hit on this little person icon and, and it brings it right back up. And then if you wanna turn it off, just go inside your settings, accessibility, hearing enhancements, and then you just turn off live transcribe. My guess is that it will work with the full rollout. And then the very final last one, it's the extra one, it's the 11th feature, and it's the way that the volume rocker, uh, the, the animations and the way that it works is a little bit different. So you can swipe it down, you can also hit the volume down, uh, you can hit on, this little icon here to make your music or your ringtones and everything else kind of go mute if you want them to. So it, it's a little similar from before, but the other one was more ugly. This one looks just a little bit better uh, and it's really nice, you know, switching between loud and, and low and muting really fast just by hitting on this little volume button and then clicking right there. Uh, they made this a little bit smaller because it doesn't have to be so intrusive, but that is another very small change with Android 10 and the One UI Update 2. But I hope that you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to hit on subscribe. You subscribe right over here in the very bottom left hand side. And if you liked this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video as well. And I'll see you guys later.